Hi everyone. So after my crazy 150 solo push with five and a half thousand keys, I thought that uh, maybe I can present my ideas to uh, reduce the RNG requirements, reduce the rift fishing while simultaneously improving the experience. So um, basically my main goal here is to get people you know, from the menu gameplay into the rift gameplay. So that's like the main uh, objective here. And uh, otherwise, also, you know, I try to just mm, add um, like a few more, you know, dynamic changes, maybe that could make it more fun, more interesting to to play or to watch, and uh, also just to make, like reduce the frustration a little bit of you know sometimes just getting completely destroyed by RNG. I do believe that uh, the RNG requirements that we have in the game are not necessarily a bad thing, but um, yeah, it sometimes it goes a little bit over the top. And, uh, you know, obviously in a game like Diablo, there are so many different uh, things that, you, you know, you can find in a rift that you can change on your build. And, you know, it just kind of fits together in some cases and you have like the perfect storm. And there's nothing wrong with this by itself. The problem is just that, you know, certain mechanics, certain things are too overpowered and too frustrating and too required. Um, this mainly comes down to mob types, to um, pylons, to the, the maps and uh, also elites and um, yeah i want to talk through all these points and uh, then give my own suggestions so uh, let's start so the number one point that i want to make here is a rift restart button um, i think this would be incredibly good to have because right now every time you want to restart a run uh, you have to go to the menu you have to go start a new game and it takes roughly 20 seconds or so if you're fast so it's like three keys a minute and that is way too little because um yeah right now if like nothing changes here if nothing of these points would be um uh, taken over then uh you know it's like around a one in ten to open a festering woods or battlefields map which is like the two top maps and uh, that alone would take like over three and a half minutes or so and uh, then there's a lot of monster types that are really really bad and you're gonna skip by default um, so realistically you're looking at something like 1 in 30 to 1 in 40 keys if you do like kind of like a serious push and that means you can easily sit in the menus for like 10 minutes straight and uh, this is not really great um, and i want to basically you know just make that faster with restart button you know if you can just you know go in close again you know if you have enough keys you know you know some keys some people have a lot of keys you know i farm a lot of t16 i always push with like a thousand keys plus or so and uh you know just having a with restart button or like someone like to, that can talk to auric in town or whatever to close the run uh, i don't see why this would not be possible i think this would um improve the experience by a lot just with this little change without doing anything else because, you know, if you can just restart in two seconds instead of 20 seconds, you know, you would sit there, you know, like open a few runs and then, you know, like maybe half a minute, uh, you know, a few keys are gone, whatever. And uh, then you have a map that you want to try. So, you know, this will be totally fine. And then you try a map for like five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe you go all the way and it's got a really close run. So, you know, the ratio between menu and uh, Rift gameplay would increase dramatically just with this one change. So please. Okay, next up we have pylons. So I think the biggest offender obviously is the conduit. Conduit is by far the strongest pylon, which has something to do with some of the other problems that I'm going to discuss here. Mainly that elites are almost unkillable for almost every build in the game when you're at a pushing tier. And uh, only in very specific circumstances you are, you are able to kill elites. But generally elites are like an 80% or 90% auto skip uh, when you're pushing and uh, this is a problem and conduit solves that problem but the problem is again <laughs> you need to get a conduit so um you know like basically any run that does not have a conduit is a failed run by default when you are pushing to the maximum and uh, i think it should not be you know such a big deal you know it, it can be nice you know conduit can be strong whatever but uh you know i don't think it should be the way it is right now the other issue is a conduit that it's extremely weak when you're not pushing so when you're doing like your casual like you know tier 90 tier 100 speed runs in two minutes conduit does absolutely nothing because you're one-shotting stuff anyway so because of this you know hp scaling mechanism um yeah like it, it kind of makes it you know, way too weak in low runs and way too strong in high runs and this problem becomes even worse in four man pushing where you know the conduit is like easily 50 percent of the rift so um yeah this has to change a little bit i think and at the same time you can also change some of the other pylons speed pylon and shelling pylon especially 
there's, I don't know, almost no build whatsoever that likes to get those pylons. You know, they are basically just like a, a wasted pylon in most cases. Uh, speed pylons are not even clicked by many builds because of the knock-up effect. Um, I think you could just like straight up buff speed pylon to like 100% attack speed, uh, remove the knock-up effect, be done with it, you know. It will be you know, not perfect for every build, not everyone really benefits from attack speed, but it will do something. And um, then, you know, you can you can go ham for a little bit, you know. And uh, channeling is kind of like, yeah, pretty much any build that requires a cooldown in some way has that cooldown requirement anyway. Um, in best case, it helps you to survive a little bit because you can maybe teleport around more, you have more smoke screen or whatever. But um, yeah, channeling needs to it needs to get a little bit more juice, you know. Uh, it's just it's just kind of like a whatever pattern, you know. It's a waste, especially when that channeling could be a cornered, you know. You can feel really bad really easily. So yeah, overall, improve the consistency. I think something like a power pylon is generally doing its job well. Uh, cornered is too high, but speed and channeling are too low. And the shield pylon, you know, shield pylon is fine. You know, no one is really sad about finding a shield pylon in most cases. I think that's okay, and you can use it to um, uh, progress faster as well in most cases, so that's nice. All right, elites. This is a pretty big one. Uh, as I mentioned, elites are almost unkillable. Um, which has to do with the fact that area damage is extremely strong and uh, the the base for uh, most of your damage during a high tier push. And uh, even on builds that don't have area damage, something like a uh, Barbara Witch Doctor, the problem is even more amplified because Barbara actually scales better than area damage itself. So, um, you know, this becomes even worse on certain builds. Um, there's very few builds that can actually kill elites off um, in a timely manner. Um, usually you just lose time trying to kill off even like a 5% elite. You know, if the elite doesn't die while you're doing everything else, while you're pulling the trash and killing the trash and so on, you basically have to skip it almost every time. Uh, this is like one of the big noob traps in the game. And uh, I also don't think that you should really be so incentivized to not fight the, the hard enemies, so to say. So I would just reduce the HP across the board. I would increase the dangerousness as uh, as a result, so why not add like a fifth affix or something like this? Uh, I don't know, maybe increase the spawn rate of the affixes. So, um, you know, if you reduce the HP, then you also don't have to stack up like five elite packs at once to, you know, actually get the progression that you need out of it. So if you can actually find like one or two packs along with some trash, um, why not just, you know, increase the dangerousness a little bit? And that would be totally fine. Because uh, if you actually get some progress, if it's actually worth fighting them, then sure. So um, also I would add um, a static HP bonus to blues. Right now yellows have a static HP bonus and blues have a percentage based HP bonus. And um, I would uh, I would also add a static bonus to the blues because you can get some elites like shade stalker packs or you know some some really really small monsters basically. They have like no HP. They just die somewhere in the pool without you doing anything. And then you can get like armored ons, you know. And all, both of these packs um, give you pretty much the same progression because you get the free globes. And uh, yeah, this doesn't really feel right, I think. So uh, I would, you know, kind of even it out a little bit. You know, Armageddon's still gonna suck, but they're gonna suck a little bit less compared to other blues. So, um, you know, this this might be kind of like an advantage there. Um, you could also buff the percent, like the, the progression gain from killing the, the blue pack because they have more HP than the regular Armageddon, for example. You could, uh, on top of the, the globes, you could also uh, give, um, you know, like a little bit, you know, like double the progression or something, for example. So that when you kill a gloom, gloom wrath, you get nothing anyway. But when you kill an hour dawn, I don't know how much they are, like 0.7% or something, um, then, you know, get like 1.4%, for example, on top of the, the globes that drop eventually. So I think that would be a pretty good change to kind of even it out and to not make it, you know, so bad in some cases where I get like, you know, only these really big packs. And then you have like these other really nice maps where you get only the small ones. Also, yellows are even bigger of a problem. Yellows are generally what you want to avoid um, because, uh, well, they have uh, lots of annoying minions that don't really give you anything. And then they uh, have even more HP than most of the blues and they only give you like one more globe. And you have to kill that one yellow and you know, usually you have the same problem. No area damage anymore. They have a lot of HP. You have to kite them, you know, like for six minutes until eventually maybe they might die. And um, yeah, even when you get a conduit, you kind of want to have only blue packs instead of only uh, yellows because, again, you have minions and so on. So yeah, I would uh, improve the yellows, maybe nerf the HP, something like that. Um, just yellows are generally what you want to avoid. 
and uh, I would also juice the others up a little bit more, you know, as a result. So if they're easier to kill, make them more dangerous, maybe give them, you know, another FX or something like that, and uh, this, this could also help a bit. Then again, um, improve the, improve the AI, so this is mostly for blue packs. It's incredibly frustrating when you, you know, actually fight an elite pack for five minutes and then eventually you kill them off and you realize, oh, there's this one guy hiding in a corner, six queens way back, and uh, he's still 80% HP. So, you know, the run is basically over at that point because you lost like four percent progression and uh, you invested a lot of time actually trying to finish off an elite in most cases and uh, or at least like kiting it along and so on and then you realize oh this was all in vain so uh yeah to make elites like stick to each other basically you know especially like you know skeletal archer packs and these kind of things uh like burrowing leapers they like to run away and are never to be seen again um i think you know this is you know kind of like a skill element but at the same time it's also very annoying and it really punishes people that um cannot see the elites you know off screen and uh, this is this is just very bad. So yeah, please. And the same here, make them more aggressive, uh, not just with extra affixes, for example, but just the behavior, you know, make them follow you more. Uh, maybe they have like an extra pull range. So maybe you kind of like, you know, gravitate towards you from off screen or something like that. Um, I think this would make uh, an interesting dynamic in the game where uh, you're actually, you know, are always in danger, basically. You know, there's always like an elite hunting you, so to say. And uh, this this could maybe um, also be interesting here. I would also make um, maybe a change to Stricken or introduce similar mechanics. I also have this further down. Um, you know, you could buff the value of Stricken so you can actually finish off elites a little bit. Um, you can also make it work with multiple targets or both. Um, so right now we have some uh, some Rift Guardians, for example, that spawn a lot of ads like Choker, Perendi, and so on. Those are terrible Rift Guardians for pretty much every build in the game because they spawn uh, ads and you can't really control those ads and they have too much HP for you to kill those ads and you lose all your stricken because most builds can't really decide uh, which target to apply stricken to. In case you're not aware, it only applies to the first enemy hit. It has an internal cooldown. So there's only so much you can do. And uh, well, in this this makes most, for, for most builds, it makes um, single target Rift Guardians the best choice. And then there's you know, certain builds that really like something like Zaxxers or Hamelin or so, because you first you can get some Stricken and then you can you know uh, get some ads and um, blast the boss like this. So yeah, not only would I buff the Stricken, but it would also just you know make the Rift Guardians a bit more consistent as well in that regard. Then we have um, the Illusionist uh, Spawners. Um, so Tomb Guardians and the Safe Nightmares especially, um, those can actually um, give you your progress from 0 to 100% in time to actually uh, uh, just you know stay in one place, uh, spawn skeletons or spawn like metal lords and stuff like this. And uh, they are extremely rare. In my, my 5,500 keys, and I've been running through a lot of rifts, uh, you know, trying to uh, go through multiple floors, trying to explore floors and so on. I've never found a single one of either of these. So they are, they are very, very rare, but they are extremely good and to the, to the point where enslaved nightmares um, especially can improve your clear potential by multiple tiers. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very gimmicky. So this is, has nothing really to do with you know, like the actual pushing, with the actual like skill elements involved in, in such a big push and so on. In the end, you're just fishing like 10,000 keys and hope to find this pack once. And then, yeah, I hope that you can actually get to like hundred percent easily and get a rift guy that doesn't suck for your build. So yeah, it's it's very gimmicky. It's uh, I think this should be removed. You know, they removed most of the illusion spawners. I rather think this is an oversight, but it never got changed again. But uh, I think it would be about time. Even though it you know it makes for some funny highlights here and there, but yeah, for an actual pushing strategy, I'm not sure if you want to really want to keep that in the game. Okay, here is uh, one of my uh, ideas for a Paragon rework, maybe. Um, a small stricken effect could be uh, included, um, kind of like um, this this here, so this could be a change as well. Gold find, for example, is whatever, I guess. And uh, why not add something like, um, you know, the 50 points, 0.5% stricken effect that applies to multiple targets. Um, so it's not really the same as the Bane of the Stricken, but it would kind of like help out with those, you know, really, really long fights where um, you know you have those elites left at like 10%, but you know by that, by that time you might have stacked up you know like plus 100% damage, and uh, you you actually have a chance to finish them off you know. So I think this would be a pretty cool idea to explore. Um, then diamonds, I think it would be nice as well if diamonds were buffed significantly in the weapons. 
it's just so that you actually have some uh, some options instead of emerald in every single build uh, maybe you have a build that you know kind of um, performs pretty well but it has really big trouble against elites so you can just throw in a diamond and uh, maybe that gives you like 50 percent elite damage or something and you know maybe it's somebody like this would make it worth you know to to implement diamonds into your build sometimes instead of just going maximum dps and uh trying to uh, trying to work that way so this could also help him and just in general i'd buff elite damage across the board the values are way too low Bane of the powerful way too low um the you know the weapon rolls and so on it's not a stat that you really want and it's mostly a stat that you want to optimize your character with in speed runs but um yeah then again you know i i don't see why at least we could get more slots to roll elite damage you know if you can get it on shoulders if you can get it on uh, you know, gloves or whatever like everywhere where you can roll area damage for example i don't know maybe something like this so for the Rift Guardians, uh, I think that we could normalize the fights a little bit, um, especially hitboxes, te teleporting behavior, uh, add spawns and dangerousness. Uh, some Rift Guardians are very hostile, some Rift Guardians just never come to you, some Rift Guardians have tiny hitboxes and so on. So I think this could be normalized a little bit, it's kind of like um, out of balance in that regard. And the add spawn, um, for example, you know, if there's some kind of like stricken change, where Stricken works more consistently in a, a multi-target scenario, or maybe it prefers elites over non-elites or something like that. Um, I don't see why we could just like not add more ads to any boss. That would kind of like make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe those could even be randomized a little bit, uh, so that it's not always the same boring fights. You know, everyone has fought every Rift Guardian like a thousand times, and uh, we don't need you know like five minutes you know Stricken stacking and then. You know, all you do is like dodge around a little bit and eventually the Rift Guardian dies. So um, I think they could be, you know, spiced up. Uh, for example, with random elite affixes, with random monsters or something like that. You know, there could be um, a lot of things that uh, would make it more interesting. And on top of that, I think also just in general, Rift Guardian fights need to be shorter. So uh, I, I actually calculated this here with um, a different scaling um, behavior. So right now, when you do like a 150 solo push, depending on your build, um, for my Demon Hunter, I actually did, I did it the other day. It was an uh, eight and a half minutes uh, Rift Guardian kill uh, on 150 solo. Um, yeah, I didn't really optimize it, uh, but uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was just my, my setup basically with a Stricken, and I used Single Out as well on a dual wheel build. So I did try to get a little bit more damage out of it. It was like the average Rift Guardian in a Cold Snap, uh, which was um, a uh, a normal single target Rift Guardian, so kind of like a, what, what you want, and uh, you know, eight and a half minutes. So, uh, <laughs> this is way over the top, and there are builds that kill it faster, obviously. And I'm also like only two and a half K Paragon, which is you know, kind of a little bit too low to 450. But you know, even if you go down to like 140, it would probably still be like a four minute fight or five minute fight or something like that. And 140 is not even the, the final tier I could do without a season theme. So it's pretty terrible. There's very few builds that can kill Rift Guardians quick, and I think just in general this has to be reduced. And uh, here's some values, for example. So I did a scaling here. Um, so I have only one decimal, but uh, what really matters are the, the numbers down below. So here we have the tier, we have the 17% scaling, which is the current scaling. Every tier increases 17% HP multiplicatively compared to the previous tier. And here's one with a hypothetical 16% scaling. And here we have the comparison. So it's basically uh, this number divided by this, and uh, like what what kind of like percentage share that make, makes up to be. So if you go down here, you can see that um, somewhere at um, around tier 81, Rift Guardians would have half the HP with this kind of scaling than they do now. I think that's okay. Um, at like 100, which is kind of like a typical speed farming tier, it's still like 42%, so slightly under half. Yeah, I don't see why not, you know, especially if you make them a little more dangerous and so on. You could definitely reduce the HP a bit in that way. And then we go to the 150, and here we have um, 28%. And I think that's actually, you know, a pretty, pretty good value. You know, if you keep stricken as it is, um, you know, like my 8.5 minutes fight would probably um, shrink down to something like a 3 minute fight because of, you know, how the scaling works and so on with stricken. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, something for something like three minutes for a weak single target build is good. And then you have some some other builds that, you know, obviously do it much faster. So they might do like a one minute Rift Guardian kill or one and a half or maybe two. So, uh, you know, something like that is uh, much more in line of what I believe it should be. You know, you don't want to stand there and just fucking whack away uh, other Rift Guardian for five minutes or six minutes or eight minutes. 
Um, this is it's just not really good. So this might be you know a way out. You know, just reducing this one percent on the scaling. Um, I think it kind of comes out like to a pretty decent result. You know, it gets close to where I believe this should be. Basically, is what I'm saying. So maybe something to explore to actually have like different scaling for um, with guardians here. Okay, next up we have monster types. So um, I, I'm going to make a uh, kind of like a list for uh, monster types. It's very hard to put it all in, in, in one place, you know, because I also want to show the monsters and so on. There's a lot of like particularities that monster types have uh, with their behavior and how you play against them and so on. So obviously, if you don't know these, you know, like special strategies, I'd say, then um, you're going to perform really badly against certain monster types. And then there's other monster types that are just easier to play against and so on. You know, all of this is fine. But all in all, given, you know, perfect gameplay, there are a lot of monster types that are extremely bad. And uh, this mostly comes down to the fact that there's a lot of ranged monsters that you cannot get area damage on. You know, you have like a bunch of archers staying in the back and you never kill them because first of all, they might not even be in your AOE. They're not following you well. They're usually slow and they're not really grouped up or they don't you know, want to be grouped, you know, so you don't kill them as fast as you should. So melee monsters usually die much faster because they walk towards you. You can control melee monsters much easier. You have area damage and so on. So I would just buff range monsters across the board. I would buff large hitbox monsters across the board. Same thing because of area damage. Reduce the collision size on medium and large enemies. So like a Gogar that can block an entire door and it keeps. Um, obviously, this is not going to work out really well. So, um, you know, I would uh, just kind of like make it all stack a little bit more, you know, by default. Not, it doesn't have to be like wild swarm tier stacking, but, you know, just there are a lot of ones that I think, like soul lashes, for example, you know, they are so big that even if you try to make a big pull, you can't kill them in time because you don't get the air damage value that you typically get on a smaller monster like, like zombies or like uh, ghosts, you know, like all this kind of stuff. So I would just kind of like make it all clump a little bit more when you're, when you're trying to make a pull. So this would help a lot here. This would also help a lot for the bad maps, or like the small, narrow maps, the corridors, the, the keeps, whatever. So. Um, this, uh, you know, that's all. you could also make like an auto unstuck, for example, so that when you have like a keep that is blocked by Golgar, that you know after a few seconds of no monster moving, but they're like aggro to you, then maybe you know they could like start moving around so they can actually go through the door, um, and then you know they, they kind of follow you around because this is like one of the, the big problems that these maps have is uh, not necessarily that um, you know they they are bad by itself, but you can't really. Uh, you can't really make pulls, you know, and when the stuff follows you around, that would help a lot to uh, to actually um, make those maps better as well. Then you can also normalize the mob spawns. So what I mean here is that um, the, basically there are monster combinations like um, Lacuni face piece, for example. There's Lacunis, there's zombies, then there's the big zombies, I believe, then there's the mothers that spawn zombies, and then there's uh, Lacuni huntresses the face piece and that, that's the thing, the thing that's the entire combo. So this is like one of these examples and uh, you can get maps where you get tons of these mothers that spawn more zombies and uh, they are extremely good because they spawn free for progression for you and they spawn really good arrow damage targets. So this is one of these things where um, yeah, you basically get more progression out of the run than you otherwise would. And it's also kind of unfairly pushes those monster types to uh, you know a god tier basically. So there's a reason why Lacuni like, Face Beast is one of the top monster types, and this is because of many mothers. If you have like 30 mothers, uh, they spit out zombies after zombie after zombie, you suddenly get like 20% extra progression, and this is how you get this one floor rift. I actually had one of those. I had one one floor map in my 5,500 keys, and that was because Lacuni like, Face Beast with I think I had 35 mothers on that map. And then you can get the same when you have zero mothers. And you only have these face beasts and uh, they're, they're okay, but, but it's not the same when you don't have those zombies. So I would just nerf spawners in general and I would also normalize the mob spawns because, you know, I think it should be kind of like a little bit more, you know, consistent, a little bit more like an expected outcome when you start a run and you know, okay, this is in you know, face beast or okay, this is zombie grotesque or this is, you know, the, the, the ghost combo or, you know, anything like this. I think this could be a little bit more um, equalized. And here also maybe increase the movement speed of uh, certain monsters. So, uh, you know, like really slow stuff that doesn't follow you. Maybe increase the, the pull range or something like that. That would also help a lot, especially for solo players, because you usually don't have tools to make pulls like Rage Flip in a in Foreman. 
And um, yeah, it will just uh, make it a little more interesting that you can actually fight monsters a little bit more instead of just making a big pull that you know, might take forever and then you blast it all down really fast with area damage. For maps, I think what they could do is um, yeah, increase density in closed areas and small maps, you know, like keeps, head rift, uh, crypts, whatever. You can increase uh, the chance for rooms, uh, also in sewers and so on. Um, you know, typically these maps are also not just bad because there's not really that many enemies, but you also um, kind of like, as I mentioned before, you can't really pull enemies that far. You know, if they're slow and not so aggressive, uh, you have to leave them behind eventually. And, uh, you know, if, if that would be changed a little bit, then you can also you know, kind of like drag stuff along. But at the same time, I don't see the problem to, you know, just, just buff those maps a little bit, you know, and also at the same time, nerf battlefields and festering woods maybe. So they can just like enter more maps and then, you know, they're still going to be better and worse maps and so on, um, you know, just on average. And there's going to be better and worse monster types and so on. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Certain builds work really well with some monster types. Certain builds work really well with other monster types. But there are, you know, typically the best maps and there are typically the best monster types. And I think this could be kind of like changed a little bit to, um, you know, kind of like give you a bigger pool to draw from as well, you know, because there are uh, certain skill elements involved as well in playing through a sewer map, in playing through a keeps and, you know, in, in uh, playing against like a Molu monster type or playing against Golgoros and so on, you know, but typically those elements don't really matter because it's a failed run when you get them right now. So, you know, if, if this was like equalized a little bit, if you could play for more maps and uh, you can progress, if you do it well, then uh, this would help a lot here. Yeah. So um, I think this would be great and uh, it could definitely, you know, put people into the rift a lot more and also reduce the frustration of going through floor one for like, you know, eight minutes and uh, then you go to floor two and you get like uh, a keeps that is like really, really big and has the shittiest monster type. Um, you know, that could all be reduced a little bit so that, you know, when you play it well, when you play around what is given to you, then uh, you could perform well, and that would be kind of the dream here. And also, Python spawns are an issue, um, especially on small maps and Plague Tunnels. Plague Tunnels is like the biggest offender here. Um, if you get like really long corridors on Plague Tunnels, there's, there's literally no Python spawns uh, until you find the room. And um, yeah, this, this has to be changed in some cases, I believe. You know, I don't see any reason why they couldn't add a few more locations just to make pilots a bit more consistent. And um, yeah, it may, kind of makes it frustrating when you, when you know that you're probably pretty close to spawning a pylon and you just can't get it. And uh, you have to run for like a minute straight to even find the next pylon spawn. So yeah, a little bit sad. Yeah, and finally, uh, builds and gameplay. Uh, so I think that there could also be more tools that give improved damage against a few targets, uh, something like the Meteor Boots that uh, just give you more damage when you hit three or fewer targets. So I think this is a good, nice step in the right direction. Um, we could change a lot of builds to work that way. Um, that would help a lot to you know give you tools to finish elites, give you tools to fight Rift Guardians. Nerf air damage I mentioned, give more elite killer options. I um, also talked about this earlier with Venus Stricken, elite damage and so on. We could buff Bane of the Powerful to actually be an elite killer gem. Right now it's just terrible and it's uh, maybe used in a 260 build. So um, you know, why not give it some, some crazy effects? Um, you could introduce new mechanics uh, that makes finishing off low targets easier or may benefits you from fighting for a long time aside from Stricken. Um, I don't really know, this could be almost anything. This could be like a new gem that works against like low HP targets. It could be some Paragon change. Uh, it could be, you know, maybe some item that um, you could wear, like a ring or something like that, you know, something that is like flexible or an amulet, you know, it's like instead of squirts or flavor, you have this amulet and that gives you like a huge bonus against elites in certain conditions. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Nerf Paragons in general, um, yeah, I think this is uh, probably needed anyway, but I just wanted to mention this here as well. Um, it would improve the competition, it improved the, um, the gameplay in general, because also, you know, all of this stuff like, you know, making elites more dangerous, but giving them more progression and so on. Um, this doesn't really work when you don't know Paragons, because at some point your character becomes near invincible with Paragons. It's not just a damage increase, but it's also a lot of, about a toughness increase. And, um, you know, kind of this would go against this idea of, uh, you know, having uh, hard fights, having dangerous fights that are very rewarding. So, um, yeah, there, there could be maybe some changes there, especially like the main style and the vitality gains. Then here, add more dynamic to a run that keeps it interesting. So here I'm mainly thinking about uh, season 19 and season 21 themes. 
and yeah they don't really sit well with a lot of the player base but um, yeah, a lot of people also like them, especially those that uh, push a lot. So I, I actually really enjoyed, uh, especially season 19. Season 21 was also fine, I'd say. Um, I enjoyed the push a lot, but um, yeah, I could also do without a season theme. So it's kind of like, yeah, it has pros and cons for me. And um, I think that uh, what it really shows us, though, is that uh, a run is really cool. It's really fun when you can actually you know, keep going until you know almost the end every time. Because there's always this option to you know maybe get some really nice procs a few times in a row, or you can, can get a pilot spawn, or you can get a nice boss and so on, or like the combination of all of that. And uh, it kind of makes it interesting, you know, especially when there is the possibility to have short elite fights, to have short rift guarding fights, you know, shorter than usual. And, um, you know, kind of like, okay, if you get it, then that's it, you know. So uh, this is what made those seasons really interesting, I believe. Um, because it was not like, okay, you go into a rift after fishing like 50 keys and you play until minute five and you realize you're behind a minute and there's no way to catch up anymore. So uh, unless you get like the absolute dream map, you like you go to floor two and it's a wild storm festering or something. So, you know, in those cases, you know, right now in season 21 or season 19 as well, you could be behind on time. And then you could get some crazy plays, some crazy moments, and suddenly you're ahead again, you know, to kind of like turn it around. And we need more of these turnaround moments, you know, apart from the season theme, I believe, you know, because the season theme is going to be over at some point, and who knows what they're going to get next. And uh, these kind of like, you know, turnaround moments are really fun, really exciting, and make for, uh, you know, like a, a great experience, I believe. So it doesn't have to be, you know, twisters spawning and the meteors falling from the sky. But it could be, you know, like more pylon spawn events, more, uh, you know, certain elite uh, fights. I mean, maybe you can proc something uh, besides uh, pylons. I don't know, something like that. There could be many things that could help you out here. Also, add more skill elements that can improve your performance. Um, so, yeah, just in general, raise the skill cap from, from builds maybe. Um, yeah, maybe this is a little too late, but, you know, when, when there's like new builds in, introduced or something, then, uh, for example, like the God the Age. It's it's a very good combination of, you know, easy to play, hard to master, I believe, you know. So, uh, you know, anyone can hold the down the button for right click and, and straight around and then shoot a few generators. But uh, actually playing it well uh, requires a lot of, you know, very, very small details, um, handling of the movement, the flow, the momentum and so on. So this is amazing. This is a very uh, well designed set in that regard, I would say. And um, yeah, it doesn't really have the craziest skill ceiling, but there's definitely a huge difference between low end and the high end. And I think that's great. And the same with something like Be Wizard, for example, where you have to you know go into Archon at the right time, you know stuff like this. Um, I believe that uh, there could be maybe similar things added to other builds. But it's also fine to have builds that are you know more more universal or more uniform in their gameplay. You know, like Impale, for example. Um, there are a lot of people that enjoy this kind of gameplay and uh, I totally understand why. So I don't want to take that away, but I don't really, mm, I don't really see the issue of, you know, there is more builds or more elements kind of like that can boost your, your gameplay somehow. Add more items to change the way that rifts are played or progressed, for example, Nemesis Braces. You know, I don't see the issue with adding more stuff like this that you actually want to include in your build somehow. Um, maybe again, through uh, like some item they can wear, through a gem they can wear, maybe that spawns extra elites, you know, even without clinging pylon, you know, sometimes it opens a portal and there's like monsters coming out to give you progress and elites and whatever. Um, but you also have to deal with them, you know, while fighting the Rift Guardian, for example. You know, kind of like pros and cons. And um, I don't know, like, there could be a lot of stuff. This could also be a season theme, I guess. But um, yeah, that kind of like a, a permanent fix for this might not be that terrible either. Yeah, and here finally a lot more crazy moments. Uh, that's what I mentioned with the, the turnaround moments um, earlier. So yeah, I already covered this, I guess. Yeah. So this is about it. What I have here, um, I try to give my input as generic as possible by also giving some examples of what I believe it could be. Uh, I think that uh, even with some very small changes, yeah, you could improve with fishing a lot. So especially um, this. Uh, is probably uh, the biggest change here, even though it doesn't even change the gameplay, but uh, it would definitely dramatically increase the experience for most people. And it would be nice to also incentivize people to 
um, push a little bit. So, um, you know, instead of uh, everyone sitting in the menu and for like 100 keys until they finally get something, you know, this puts off people very fast. And I understand why. And I just have the de determination to actually go through it, you know, but I also don't really enjoy seeing in a menu, obviously. So this would help. And then obviously, you know, like improving the RNG a little bit um, would also help, you know, monster types, map types, elites. Um, elites is mostly like a frustration thing, I'd say. Uh, because it's just it's just not really fun to fight elites for five minutes and then skip them when they're ten percent ten percent HP. You know, it just, just feels really bad. Um, maps and monster types obviously they can always be balanced more, and they have to be, I believe. Uh, and then obviously builds. You know, this could be some kind of like long term fix. Maybe you know when there's like new builds introduced, new items introduced, whatever. But yeah, so that's what I had to share here, and maybe as kind of like an incentive for uh, pushing. Um, why not add some little reward, you know, like a, a temporary reward for holding a leaderboard spot, for example. So, you know, when you're at rank one on the leaderboard, um, you get like some bonus to your XP or some bonus to your magic find or, you know, some kind of like uh, some stuff like this, you know, or maybe you're, uh, you get like some, some temporary wings that you can wear so you can show off whenever you're in a party or uh, I don't know, something like that, like a portrait or your name is written in a different color. Um, I don't know, you know, it should be all amazing. And then, you know, it could be a kind of like a, um, a, re a reward uh, scheme where you, you get like, uh, for example, if it's like a, a numerical value, like magic find, let's say, or XP bonus, um, then, you know, it kind of like scales down, you know, the, the way you go in the leaderboard so that, you know, everyone gets a little bit piece of the cake, but, you know, the higher up, uh, the more you get kind of, you know. I think this would be amazing, kind of like um, make a very competitive leaderboard where you actually get something out of it and uh, you are incentivized to push uh, during the season as well, you know. I like to push rather early because, well, I am not a Paragon grinder. I gear my character and then I go with what I have, you know. Uh, once I'm satisfied with my items, um, for me it's more about the item grind and then doing the really crazy push. And uh, this is much more enjoyable because I, I have low Paragons, you know. it's. It's, um, I don't know, it's just more fun. You're more squishy, you have to play better. And um, it just it just makes uh, a great experience for me. But um, it's kind of sad that um, there's not really that much going on at the start of the season. You know, maybe the first weekend, a lot of people, you know, blast a lot and then they kind of drop the game in, in general. But, you know, those people that play for a long amount of times, like a few weeks or even the whole season, um, there's a lot of people that only push at the very end. And uh, I think that if you actually can improve your farming efficiency, for example, by being, you know, somewhere up there on the border, at least, you know, you don't have to go for like a super crazy push, but, you know, maybe you want to invest like a hundred keys here and there to try to improve your rank a little bit. Um, yeah, it could be really, really awesome if you actually got a reward for that, you know, for kind of like wasting your time doing that. Uh, because obviously the, the best strategy is to just grind for two and a half months and then push for two weeks and then you get the best result like that. But, uh, you know, that, might, that might, might not change, but it might be a little bit less rewarding to do that strategy compared to, you know, kind of like staying up there all the time. Yeah. So my, not two cents, but <laughs> hope you liked this video. Hope you agree with some of my points. Uh, maybe you have your own ideas, uh, just share them. And uh, I don't know, maybe Blizzard listens, maybe we'll see some changes. I am very hopeful. Um, I think that the free still has a way to go until we finally see D4. And um, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy, you know, seeing uh, some of these, um, some of these ideas maybe um, brought up in a future patch or so. So yeah, let's see what uh, will happen. And then hope you like this video. See you guys next time.